Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's channel is a group of sorts and a family, <laughs> and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so if you haven't already watched the pre-channel video for channeling Andy Gibb and the Bee Gees, make sure you do that. Watch the pre-channel video because I kind of lay the groundwork as to how, this, how all this came about. I'm also going to mention, so obviously I'm channeling Andy Gibb and the Bee Gees, and I'm also going to mention that I'm dealing with a bit of a, a cold virus. Our whole family, our whole house has been like a Petri dish for like a, a week or so. And so uh, if you watch my vlogs, on my other channel, then you know that that's kind of what's been going on. And so <laughs> I'm going to need to drink a lot more water than I normally do in a video. So I'm not sure how this is all going to go as far as sound quality. I'm hoping it's going to be A-OK -okay for you guys. All right. So hang with me. All right. So yeah, way to set up the channel, Bridget. Woohoo! Now everybody's going to so want to listen. Well, I hope you do stick around. I am going to tell you that I was filling up my hot water mug, just, just hot water. And it's a Mickey Mouse mug, and it's a Disneyland Resort mug. It says Disneyland Resort inside. And Andy, as I was walking back down the hallway, I had everything set up, and I just heated up my, my hot water, and I came back down the hallway, and he said, I love Disneyland. I'm like, you do? And he says, yeah, I love Disneyland. All right, great. Okay, that's a good way to break the ice. Because you guys, I don't know a lot about the Bee Gees. I know their music, obviously. I've heard their music. No, I have not been living in a cave. I obviously know that they're a singing group. Um, I wasn't sure. And to be super transparent with you, I didn't really know or remember that Andy Gibb was not actually part of the Bee Gees, that he was had his own solo career. So because when that was all going about, I was like a toddler. So it wasn't really my like genre, but of course I know some of the music. In fact, yesterday the song, um, How Deep Is Your Love was playing in my head. And so when I got home from running errands, I listened to that song on YouTube and I watched their video of that song and like lights were kind of going around and the three men, um, Barry, Maurice and Robin were in that particular video and they were singing. And so I, and I was totally confused too, because to be honest, like you guys, really, I didn't realize that Barry was Barry. Like, I don't know. That's how much I didn't really know about the group. So um, hopefully if I have holes in this channeling that you guys as fans can fill in the blanks here because it's tricky for me to keep my details straight, as you know, and also they're a group. So there's multiple people here. So let's start chatting with them and see what we get. All right, let's try to keep this organized. Hopefully I will be able to keep it organized. All right, okay, so I already said hi to Andy. Andy feels super, uh, he feels very young, youthful, and almost kind of naive a little bit. Like, I don't want to use the word innocent, but naive, you know, like, like um, getting famous really young or something. Like he's giving me this impression of like a 16 or 17 year old and feels really naive, like not really understanding kind of how... Um, how being famous works, I guess. It feels like he doesn't... He likes the being able to perform and having the uh, perf the performances is the words that come through. Like he, he's sharing with me that he likes the performances to be able to perform, like do duets and uh, different kinds of. Uh, he just says performances, and I feel like like on different shows. I I saw him. I remember this. I saw him at some point, I don't know if it was the 80s or what, but on like Solid Gold, remember that show way back in the olden days? <laughs> used to come on after Saturday morning cartoons. I'm totally dating myself. But if you remember that, <laughs> give a thumbs up in the comment. I remember that <laughs> too, okay? But he says, I enjoy the performances. That's what he's saying, the performances. And it feels like when he's not just singing by himself, but when he's singing with someone else. So, um, 
that's something that he brings forward. So I'm connecting with him, not clear audiently, so I'm not hearing him specifically. Um, I'm more sensing him, so clairsentience, which is energetic, energetically giving me information and then I'm sharing. So I'm gonna paraphrase. So that, I just need to be specific because there's been some questions about that in uh, some of the other videos that I've done for channeling. So I'm trying to kind of give you guys an understanding of how this works for me. And just because it works this way for me doesn't mean it works that way for you or for other psychics or other mediums. So don't compare, it doesn't, doesn't do anybody any good. All right, so he is, yeah, like in Disneyland and kind of childlike a little bit is what I would say maybe youthful. Um, but then I also feel like youthful, like teenager, and then I see him skipping to like he's 80 or something. Like he missed a whole chunk of time, like there's this big gap in his time. So I feel like from the time that he was like successful and famous and all that, and the time he died, there was like a, it was a blur is what he's kind of sh showing me or having me feel. So, um, so remember, showing me when I say something like that, it's visual, it's clairvoyance, and that's my primary channel, the way I get information. And so he's making me feel like there's this gap that's like whoosh, like he doesn't remember stuff. Like I feel like I'm like in and out of like conscious awareness about stuff. So I don't know if he, it feels like he, there was addiction issues and it feels like he struggled with that. And I don't know if it was alcohol and drugs or methamphetamines, medication, that kind of thing. Um, no, not medication, it looks like methamphetamines. That's the exact word that comes forward. Um, and um, alcohol, but it feels like, you guys, it feels like Andy Gibb was painfully shy. Like I feel like he was shy. And in order to kind of come out of his shell, like when he was doing a performance and stuff, he could almost like act kind of. And, in, and if he was comfortable with who he was singing with, it was fine. But he feels like, um, yeah, more of an actor is what he feels like to me than a, than a musician in that regard, like the way you would kind of feel his vibe. But yet not really, like just not, like getting overwhelmed by the fame is what I'll say. Okay, getting overwhelmed by the fame. All right. I don't see him married. I see him having on again, off again girlfriends. And I see him having one relationship that feels like it was longer term, like on again, off again, but longer term. Um, someone that he's referring to that was a really good friend to him and really supportive of him. And she feels like she might've been an actress, like on some kind of a TV show or like a, um, not a daytime soap opera, but like a, the evening ones that they used to have. Remember like a dynasty dynasty or Falcon's Crest or something like that? It kind of feels like that, like she was on some kind of TV show that wasn't um, a daytime one. I don't think it was daytime. It doesn't look like it is. All right, anyway, um, so that's why I see, I see something big about cars, like he really likes, like I literally see, uh, I don't know if it's a metaphor, if it's really, but it's like a yellow car. And I don't know, it's not like a Mustang, but it's something kind of like that, like really fancy, like this is a big deal and it's yellow, like a banana yellow color. And it might have like a black trim along the hood kind of thing, but it's like fancy. So it's like, I don't know if he's showing me because he loved cars or if that was cause like it was a really special thing for him that he got when he bought his first fancy car or something, I don't know. Um, he also said something, he mentioned something to me yesterday. So if you watch the, the, the pre-channeling video for Andy Gibb and the Bee Gees, you will see that I talked about this a little bit, but he also said, um, I didn't say this exactly, but he also shared with me that he said, uh, this is when I saw so this is when I picked up the phone and started recording while I was like making myself a healthy dinner um, because I was talking to my husband. I'm like, I need to record this because all this stuff started coming in. And he said something about, I forgive, I forgive her, his mother. He's talking about his mom a little bit. Like he, he didn't give me the whole thing, of course, because that would be too many details and let's not confuse Bridget. But he made me feel like something about his mother and that he forgives her, has forgiven her or she's forgiven him. There's a forgiveness between him and his mom that occurred after he died. And so I want you guys to know that as well. Um, I feel like his mom's in heaven. I'm not 100% sure I feel like she is, um, but I feel like there's this weird kind of, um, not weird, but like a dysfunctional dynamic in that family. And um, I can't, dad kind of scares me a little bit. I can't quite tell if he was like really present and overbearing or if he was like non-existent, kind of like, you know, in his own world or something. Um, 
but I can't quite get a feel for him. I just don't like, I'm not really connecting with that vibe. Um, but I think mom is past. I think she's in the, in the afterlife. And um, if it's not mom, it's like mom's mom and there's a closeness there of energy, especially with Andy, like Andy's bringing that in. Um, I think you were the youngest. Are you the youngest? I think he's the youngest. It feels like he is. Um, and I know Barry's the oldest because he came through really strong yesterday when I was like, hey, I'm not going to channel, but then I ended up kind of channeling. Um, he, like, big and strong and, like, I'm going to take care of everybody. Kind of like the dad. Like, he almost was like a, a dad figure kind of keeping everything together, you know, and they all kind of had this mellow disposition underneath. Um, but at the same time, they each had their own personalities, um, the boys. And so... Um, Andy shows me really looking toward Barry for guidance and direction and advice and stuff, but he didn't like how he tried to kind of, um, and Barry, and Barry, um, okay, so I think this is Maurice that's talking now. Okay, so Maurice, I know Barry still is with us. Thank goodness, right? He's, he's here on earth um, at the time that I'm channeling this video. Um, and I feel like maybe it's Maurice. Maurice is saying something about they didn't always see eye to eye, like a little bit, little bit of a friction there um, at times because Barry felt like, you know, Andy was, you know, I don't want to say making stupid choices, but he was um, kind of frustrated at times with Andy. And but creatively, creatively they had some. Um, Creatively, it feels like Andy respected Barry, and Barry respected Andy's um, singing ability, that he was a good, like he was a gifted singer. And so I want to ask, okay, so I want to ask Maurice, since you just started chatting with me, and I'm with Andy as well. Andy and Maurice are here now. And so I'm going to ask Maurice, I'm going to ask you. Um, so how how is it that Andy wasn't actually part of the Bee Gees group. Why, how, how is it that, that that wasn't the deal? He says, oh, he's, he sang with us from time to time. Oh, he, he performed with us from time to time. He says, oh, it wasn't like a Michael Jackson thing, if that's what, you know, like the Jackson 5 or whatever. He said it wasn't like that. It was nothing like that. It was nothing like that. He said he just, he, his sound, you know, was, was unique. There was something about the tone of his voice that, we just felt as a group that he would be more successful on his own. And he didn't really have a desire to want to be part of the group necessarily. Like he, he didn't necessarily say, yeah, I want to join the Bee Gees. And um, Barry didn't really say, hey, we want you to join the, the group. It was kind of, and this is Maurice speaking, Maurice um, is talking about how it was kind of an unspoken thing that he could have been in the group if he wanted to be in the group. And it kind of feels like they tried to collaborate and do some things together, but it just, it was kind of, uh, he said it was kind of uh, obvious, or he said it became apparent, it was pretty apparent that he had kind of his own thing to do in the world. And so he needed to do that. And it's not because, he says, it's not because we didn't get, because we didn't get along. You know, we're brothers, so we fight, of course, and have disagreements. <laughs> He says, creative differences. That's Robin. Robin just stepped in. Robin just said, you mean creative differences? I like Robin, you guys. Look, if I had a favorite, I think I'd pick Robin. And do you know why? Because he's the one I zoomed in on on that YouTube video that I watched um, with them performing, How Deep Is Your Love? And he just seemed so kind of sweet. Um, a little bit like, uh, he seemed very... He seemed very, like when I said that Andy seemed kind of shy of the limelight, it really Robin would have been just content, happy being behind the scenes. Like, it feels like he, like the eye contact thing is like, I don't want to look. As long as there's lights and I can't see people, I'm fine with that. And he feels like more of the, almost like, I don't want to say engineer mind, but seeing the patterns of things and the cool ways that they could, you know, create, um, put the instrument instruments together and create something awesome and um, kind of like a visionary. Like he seemed more like he could see the pictures of things and how things could be and, and how things could work together and stuff. Um, almost like, yeah, engineer-like or science-like in his mind. Um, 
So that's kind of his approach. Very methodical, I guess I would say. Very methodical in his approach, but very um, oh, contented to be behind the scenes, actually, he would have been. But he says, we always listened to music growing up. He says, we always listened to music, you know, growing up. And, and it was just something that you could get lost in, you know. You could, it could just take you away from whatever you're dealing with. It could just take you someplace else. And I've always, he says, this is Robin says, I've always had an appreciation for that. It's, you know, and he looks at me and he says, you would say magical. Yeah, I would say it's like magic. You're right. You're absolutely right on that. Yeah, Robin, I enjoy your energy. It's very um, calm. And Maurice says, he isn't always like that. <laughs> Maurice, you're funny. Like, he's the funny one, Maurice is, I think. Although Robin, I think, could pull some pranks if he really wanted to. You know, it, Robin's humor would be more sarcastic, you guys, I think, if he was going to be saying, you know, doing those things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm trying to feel into, so we've got Maurice, and we've got Robin, and we've got Andy, and Barry's here on the earthly plane, so I'm recording this in March 2019, I'm actually doing this video channeling on March 13th, so, all right, okay, so is there anything that the fans would really want to know or care deeply about in regards to the band, the Bee Gees as a band. It looks like they may have started and stopped tours or had some kind of, um, they said health issues, it looks like. So the three, um, the Bee Gees, Barry and Maurice and Robin, it looks like they started and stopped tours at times because of health issues. Okay, whose health? And they said, well, Barry, um, Barry's had some problems, they said, and it kind of reminds me, like they're making me feel like indigestion kind of issues, but I know that there's more to it than that. It's not just your stomach issues or that kind of thing. Um, but because he's like a worrier, you know, he's got to like control stuff. He wants things to go a certain way and, and he worries about how things are, you know, and he's the one that would wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh, we got to make sure we do this kind of thing. Um, but he says, and Robin says, but I worried, I was like that too. That was kind of, that was me too, you know. Maurice just doesn't seem like that. Um, although Maurice does have, feel like, it feels like Maurice, you have a kind of a little bit of a, a temper that kind of wavers, like of all, you could be volatile maybe, or mellow and kind of funny. Like that's how I feel, your energy. All right, health issues. So health issues plagued everyone, yes. Um, but I know that Andy, I think that Andy died in a, like a tragic way. They're not sure. It looks like a heart thing. There's not like a formal thing, but I feel like it's his, it was his lifestyle that killed him is what I feel like. I feel like there was, um, a, it's weird though, you guys, it's weird. This is when it would be great to actually talk to Barry Gibb and have him be across from me so he could tell me, oh, this is why it feels weird or this is what's weird about it. Because Andy Gibb's death feels like not a total mystery, but it feels like there's, and it's not suspicious, but it's not for sure. Like everybody doesn't agree on how, what killed him. Let's say that. Everybody doesn't agree on what killed him. But it's not a super mystery. Like it's not a, um, oh gosh, how do I say this? It's just kind of weird. Um, I feel like it should be obvious. It just, it just has to, we just have to know if it was, I, okay, so the best way for me to describe this is that his lifestyle killed him. And so, Andy, is that accurate? He says, you can talk about, um, you know, the cho choices I made. It's interesting because I see addiction, but I don't know that that caused his death. It almost seems like a heart thing. But a heart attack or something like that, a failure of that or upper respiratory thing or something, it's partly because of the abuse of the body that happened before that. So I don't th know that it was a drug overdose or that kind of a thing, but it's, his heart just goes like, it, 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 and he can't breathe. That's what it feels like, I can't breathe kind of thing. And it kind of feels like he was sick before that a little bit, but I don't know if he was sick again, self-inflicted sickness, like with alcohol or drugs, or if it was, he actually had something and then, you know, but he's talking about how he abused the inside of his body was like an old man, you know, but he didn't, 
it's almost like binging and toxic, binging and having toxic levels of stuff that aren't healthy. But it's a combination of things, though. You guys, it's not just one thing. It's like a combination of things and how it looks to me. But it's hard to explain this, how it feels. Um, and no, they're not speaking exactly to me and telling me exactly what's going on because that's not how I don't, that's not how I hear this information. I don't hear it that way. And Maurice is like, yeah, focusing on death. That doesn't sound like a very good song, you know? Like he's like, lyrics to a song would not be focusing on death. He says, death. That's kind of depressing, he says. That's pretty depressing, he says. We all had our problems, he said. We all had our problems. We were really sad when we had to stop. I feel like we had to stop. Hmm. So why didn't Barry have a solo career? Or did he? He did. At one point, he had a few things that he did by himself or on his own, but he really believed, oh, he didn't want credit for it. He didn't want to. He was connected with the family. Like, he didn't want to be separate. He did, but then he didn't like it. It didn't feel right, or he didn't like that. It's a band. It's like a family, but it's a band, and it's it has, they have to be together. It's like cohesive. I knew this would be tricky with three dead people. Okay. Is there anything else I'm trying to... I didn't write any questions down ahead of time. I just thought I need to channel you guys and chat with you. Oh, so what... Hmm. There's a lot here. I can feel there's like turmoil. <laughs> there's tumultuous stuff. There's stuff I could really dig into, I think. Um, oh, yeah, I don't really know if I want to say that. Um, Now that you are all spirit, Maurice and Robin and Andy, is there something that you would look back on life and give to us who are watching as advice or as insight to us from the afterlife? Now that you're a spirit looking at your human lives, is there something that you would give advice, Maurice? Just keep, just keep laughing. You got to be smiling. He says you got to smile, even when you don't feel like it. He says you got to, you got to try to keep yourself, uh, you know, focused on what you need to do and try to find reasons to be happy. Try to find reasons, you know. Cut the tension, you know. When you cut the tension um, with something, you know, with something kind of funny, and it's like. Uh, It's definitely underrated, he says. Having a good time, you know, being funny. He's saying funny, like jokes. It's definitely underrated. He says, that's what I would say. Enjoy life a little more. Like, don't be so serious, you know? Okay. Thanks, Maurice. Robin, do you have something to add? He says, take care of your health. You know, I don't, he says, I don't think people realize how much stress really affects them. You know, and you feel pressure and you don't want to let anybody down and so you keep going at it and it's not safe for you to do that. Sometimes you got to recognize your own boundaries and really take care of your health. Really take care of your, your health because taking care of yourself and your body is something that, you know, when your body gives out, you're done. You know, you're done. So I would tell people to really take care of their bodies, you know, take care of themselves and their health. He's saying, um, take care of your human life. He says, take care of your humanness. Your human life, human body? I'm confused by what you're saying, be human. You're, okay, so here's the deal. Okay, Robin, all right, so let's see.
take care of the human parts of you, recognizing he, okay, so here's what he's making me feel, recognizing that there's a difference between the human capacity and the spirit capacity. And even though you're a spirit that's inside of a body, you only can go as long as the human part of you can be healthy, be productive, be connected. So he's saying, take care of the human parts of your life. So if you want to still have your body, you need to take care of yourself, is what he's trying to say. Is that, is that good? So yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks. And Andy, is there something that you'd like to share with us? Advice from the afterlife, looking back on your human life. He says, don't be so hard on yourself. Like he's giving this feeling about um, self-judgment or judging yourself, that kind of thing. And uh, he says, um, it's easy to believe what your mind tells you. And uh, so make sure that you're, how do I say this? It's like kind to yourself. It's different than that though. He's not saying be kind to yourself. He's just, he's saying, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, be careful what you tell yourself about yourself. What you believe is, is what is, is basically what he's saying. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. He's saying yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. We've been talking to the BGs, Maurice and Robin, and also chatting with Andy Gibb. All right, my friends, so this is Bridget. You've been watching a channel here at Above Life Channel. The purpose is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope because this is your life. This is your life, so live it. Go ahead and have at it in the comments. Go to town and fill in the blanks or ask each other questions and connect because you are an important part of the channeling. You add value in your comments. And I do try to read all of the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here at this channel.